This is KGW News at 11. Tough tactics from federal police last night in front of the courthouse. Look at that. City leaders say it's moments like this that are making matters worse in Portland. Last night, protesters also set fire to the police union headquarters in North Portland. Thanks for joining us. I'm Pat Doris in for Brittany Falkers. Let's take a live look downtown right now. It's no doubt another tense night, but from what we can tell and what we can see so far, it looks like things are relatively calm and peaceful there. We understand there's about 600 people gathered there. You can see that's the federal courthouse on the left, which has been spray painted. And those are the uh, silver uh, anti truck uh, devices that have been put around there. So far, no federal police on the scene and no city police as well. So we'll keep an eye on that, but uh, things are looking pretty good so far tonight. You know, it's a unique Portland way of protesting. Dozens of moms, most wearing those yellow t-shirts, marched to the federal courthouse to form a barrier in front of federal police early this evening. They're calling themselves the wall of moms and they could be heard chanting, moms are here, feds stay clear. I think what they want to do is scare us away, the feds. They want us to stop protesting, and it's the opposite effect. More, more people came out tonight. There were several people out yesterday that never protested before, and they went home saying, I'm coming back, I'm bringing a friend. I brought three other people with me tonight. Many of the moms who are taking part were also downtown last night. As you heard, many uh, were gassed by federal officers as they moved protesters away from the federal courthouse last night. Well, the attack last night on the police union headquarters was the second, maybe the third time that building has been the focus of violent demonstrators. Today, the union leader denounced the violence and the black community leaders called on demonstrators to meet with them directly. Christelle Kumwe has that part of our story. After another night of violence that turned into a riot in North Portland, black community leaders Sunday spoke directly to those involved in the violence and asked for a pause. If you want to make change, if you're serious about change, then I'm begging you as a citizen of this city for the last 32 years to ask you to put down your need for violence and meet us, have a moratorium and meet us so that we can talk and find out how we can come together. Pastor Matt Hennessy said the violence is not helping bring the change that black leaders want in Portland. Protesters Saturday night broke into the office of the police union and set it on fire. A frustrated union president said it must stop. Our community has had enough. Our business owners have had enough. Uh, officers have had enough and Portland has had enough. Daryl Turner said the violence has no connection to social change. This is no longer about George Floyd. This is no longer ra about racial equity or social justice. This is no longer about reform or the evolution of policing. This is about violence, rioting, destruction, chaos, anarchy. He urged everyone in the city to demand action. Portland, it is time to stand up. It is time to tell your elected officials that the city is under siege because of their inaction. Earlier this month, Turner said he did not believe commissioners or the mayor will act to stop violent protests in Portland. Speaking to NBC News Sunday morning, Mayor Ted Wheeler said protests were dying down until federal agents arrived. We were all breathing a big sigh of relief here locally. Then what happened was the federal troops came in last Saturday and they blew the whole thing up when they started attacking nonviolent demonstrators. Now it's unclear what it will take to stop the violence, which is why Pastor Hennessy hopes to talk with violent protesters directly. Christelle Kumwe, KGW News. Also today, President Trump took to Twitter defending his decision to send federal agents to Portland. He wrote, quote, we are trying to help Portland not hurt it. Their leadership has for months lost control of, of the anarchists and agitators. They are missing in action. We must protect federal property and our people. These were not merely protesters. These are the real deal. In other news, police are investigating a particularly scary shooting in North Portland, which appears to be random. It happened early this morning, about quarter to two in the 7100 block of North Portsmouth. Police say a man minding his own business inside a home was hit in the head with a bullet that apparently flew through the outside wall and was likely fired from a distance away. How far away is unclear. The man was taken to the hospital. Police say the injury is not life threatening. And now to the coronavirus. Things are not looking great in Oregon. Today, the Oregon Health Authority reported three new deaths. 
and also startling 436 new cases in the state today. That's just one off the daily record, which was set three days ago. OHA says there are now more than 14,500 known cases in the state. You can see the graph moving to the right there in the wrong direction. 123 of today's 436 cases were out of Multnomah County. The graph you're looking at now shows the number of cases in the county since the pandemic started. You can see a record was set today for the number of new cases. Through all of this, hospitalizations fortunately have remained relatively low. This chart shows the number of new hospitalizations each day. In all right now, 242 people are in the hospital in Oregon with suspected or confirmed cases of COVID-19. Despite rising case numbers here and across the country, President Trump says he does not support a nationwide mask mandate. It goes against what his own health experts are saying is our number one defense against the virus. I want people to have a certain freedom and I don't believe in that, no. And I don't agree with the statement that if everybody wear a mask, everything disappears. Death tolls are on the rise again across the country with Arizona and Florida breaking new records. At first, the coronavirus caused a shortage in toilet paper and hand sanitizer. Now it's causing a nationwide coin shortage. Have you heard of this? The trouble began weeks ago when production slowed at the U.S. Mint. Add to that people not using cash as often and staying home and you've got a real problem. But one Portland restaurant owner has an idea. Matthew Fryros owns Nepo 42 in Northeast Portland. He's kicked off a campaign offering people a pint of beer if they bring in a pint of pennies, which is about 600 pennies to be exact. If I could just go to the bank and buy pennies, I would. And we are unable to do that. Luckily had a big change purse at home that we've been scourging through, but we're trying our best to get uh, as much change as possible as we can get out. Maybe you should just charge in round dollars. Anyway, Frio says if his restaurant doesn't make enough soon, he could be in real trouble. He may have to resort to only allowing credit cards. It is a problem many small business owners and big companies are also grappling with. Seems like he's got a clever idea there. We have another week of beautiful weather heading our way, but unfortunately, more pools are still closed because of the coronavirus. That means a lot of you are heading out to the beaches, the rivers and the lakes instead. As Tim Gordon reports with COVID-19, you have to be careful on the beach and in the water. Full sun above makes for full parking lots at places like Broughton Beach in Northeast Portland. By midday, the shoreline along the Columbia was already filling up. And while most groups seem to set up six feet apart, the vast majority went maskless. I do have a mask with me. Um, and it just used to feel safe outside and it's a little different now. Melissa Jackson has a mask handy that she may put on if the crowding gets too much. Steve Schock left his in the car, but feels okay joining his small group. Because we've been together, so as long as people are six feet away from us, good to go. Although he admits it's hard not to mingle some at the water's edge. Everybody's pleasant, everybody kind of, you know, doing their own thing. Not very many masks out here, but you know, it is what it is. What do you do when you go in the water and in and out of the water, so. Remember, the guidelines in Oregon and Washington include wearing a mask even outdoors if you can't social distance six feet from others. You know, it's really important to keep those masks on when you're out and about, even if you're on the river, or, or really try and isolate yourself to one group so that you're, um, you know, following the guidelines to try and help keep this thing at bay and uh, flatten the curve. American Medical Response's Leah Gordon has more to say about safety once you're in the water. Whether it's paddle boarding on the Willamette, tubing on our colder, swifter rivers, or getting in the water anywhere else you go. It's all about life vests for everyone with an extra focus on the kids. So really important to keep kids in life jackets, um, specifically Coast Guard approved life jackets, and uh, also to keep them within arm's reach. Because especially with rivers, the water can be deceiving. The river is relentless. It will continue to flow um, with those wider rivers. Uh, definitely the farther out you go, the more you're going to feel that current. So staying safe or staying close in the shore uh, and again, really keeping an eye on kids. So we hope you listen to the advice and warnings in our story, because with hot weather coming in over the next few days, beaches like this are certainly going to remain busy in Northeast Portland. Tim Gordon, KGW News. And Tim tells us because of the pandemic, AMR does not have the lifeguards at High Rocks and Glen Auto Park that they usually have. 
making those particularly dangerous this year. They are doing a life jacket drive starting tomorrow, and then they'll get them to the people who need them. If you can donate, Tim has information in his story on KGW.com. Chris McGinnis joins us now. Chris, I'm sure it's still warm in a lot of people's homes right now at 11 to 15 at night, and it's just going to go up, right? It is. We get a warm day on tap for the region tomorrow for sure. And, you know, uh, back to Tim's story about the water, it's not, I mean, it's warming up a little bit, but it's not exactly warm. The warmest water temperature in the area right now, uh, the Willamette River in downtown, about 71 degrees. But some of the other uh, major tributaries here are kind of chilly. Check this out. The Clackamas River up near Three Links. 59 degrees, so be prepared. That water's still cold. All right, a cool dip on a warm night, right? That, uh, that would be good. 74 degrees right now uh, at PDX, so it's still a mild night, and the temperatures are not going to fall off that much uh, tomorrow morning. We're going to be waking up to temps in the lower 60s early on Monday morning, quickly warming through the 80s, and I think we top out in the 90s once again. Check that out, Pat. 102 in the Dow's upper 90s in Arlington. Uh, it's going to be a hot day area-wide. And then some subtle cooling coming in Tuesday. More on that coming up in just a bit. My grandfather used to live in the Dalles. It was always hot when we visited. <laughs> He's not there it now. It was 99 there today, you know. Oh, man. <laughs> Love the Dalles. A little warm. Thanks, Chris.